Practically everybody that's been up here has talked about MVNOs. Uh, MVNO stands for Mobile Virtual Network Operator, and that's an organization that acts in the marketplace as if it's a wireless carrier, but it doesn't have any of the physical network uh, in the background. And examples of that are companies like Virgin Mobile, Boost Mobile, and Quest. The host network operator is the actual company that has all of the, the network back-end switching equipment, et cetera. And those are companies like we all are familiar with, Verizon, Sprint, AT&T. So you've got to ask yourself, well, why are MVNOs even of interest to people? Well, the reason is really that a lot of the MVNOs themselves think that they can achieve a lower cost of acquisition and maintaining their subscribers. Uh, they also think they can increase the penetration in the marketplace. And in some cases, the traditional telecoms may not have as much appeal um, to an, a potential end user and put yourself in the, in the, in the uh, position of a person that likes music or video, would they rather buy a phone from Sprint or would they rather go to somebody like Helio or Virgin to get it? Because there they, they look at that company as more of sort of an expert in their field. And in some cases they can offer unique or specialized content. Uh, examples of MVNOs that have cropped up over the last years and in some cases the last months, Quest is one with Sprint Nextel. Uh, Sinopia is a fairly new company within the last year. I call them a master agent sort of MVNO. If you look at their website, they say you can start a wireless company in less than 15 minutes. Qualcomm has just announced an MVO, MVNO that they're calling Lifecom. Uh, it's, it's announced, but it won't be actually uh, in business probably till the latter part of next year. But it's going to target women in the age group from 40 to 65, and it's going to target health issues. So that's another way to look at specialized, customized content. Uh, for the best MVNO candidates, their cost of acquisition, they feel, is still going to be in the $300 to $400 per customer area. So the new MVNOs are going to have to rely on providing either unique services or data services in order to generate their profits. Getting into the MVNO business uh, is not easy, and it does have its problems. There have been some recent pretty high-profile disappointments. The ESPN uh, Disney uh, MVNO that Andy talked about earlier, where they had made an investment of $50 million against that target that Sprint talked about, 300 to 400 million. And after that, because of a lack of phones, because of a lack of, of uh, clear product definition, they folded the operation. And of course, the problem really is that the major operators have significant advantages. Uh, they've got huge marketing budgets. They've got very broad and deep distribution capabilities. And they've got these family plans that if you're a kid and your mother and father have a, a major carrier's plan and they can add them on there for next to nothing and you're a child and you come to your mother and father and say, I want to get this phone or that phone from somebody like Helio, it's, it's a, that's a tough nut to crack. But then if you look at distribution models and you look at companies like Virgin and Movida, you got to say to yourself, hmm, maybe there's something there. And they have been successful. And then last but not least, and Andy talked about this earlier today about uh, this whole issue of open access. Maybe the MVNO market or MVNO route is the way to go here. Maybe the MVNO is the kind of company that could buy wholesale, resell it, structure it in any way they want, and so in effect be an, an answer to the open access uh, question.